Hello everyone and welcome. You are on the field with me, Philip Sidney. Today I have a very, very special guest. He was the former research officer in the Ministry of Agriculture, former Minister for Infrastructure, former Minister for National Security, former Minister for Agriculture, a, ret a retired farmer, I may say, and in 2022, he was knighted, Knight Commander of the Order of St. Lucia for exceptional and outstanding service of national importance to St. Lucia. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure and honor to introduce my guest to you, my mentor, a great man, Sir Calix George. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you very much. Well, this is long overdue, sir. It was a while now we've been trying to get you. I know, you know, we, because of various activities, we were not able, but I'm so happy to have you uh, on my program today. You're welcome, most welcome. So, sir, in the deepest corner of your cerebral cortex, a seed was sown. It blossomed into a career in agriculture. Why a career in agriculture, Sir George? Oh, <laughs> the primary reason for a career in agriculture uh, was to help my country develop uh, into an independent, a viable uh, economy. And uh, the, the, that was, that was um, uh, sort of brought out while I was at school, really, okay. uh, at St. Mary's College. Um, at that time, the, I, I went to school in 1952. I went to St. Mary's in 1952. And at no, that, that's when I was born. And, and at that time, um, um, sugar was still on, but there was the question of, um, you know, bringing in the, 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 banana, the banana industry mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. Now, it so happened that we had a, a, an excellent headmaster called Brother Canis Collins, who was very perceptive and kind of trained. In the first instance, he was the first person to actually bring science education into St. Lucia. Before that time, um, um, St. Mary's College was a classical uh, college. Okay. And, and he introduced science. And he was instrumental in infusing a science orientation into our head and also of its importance to agriculture because agriculture was the, you know, the, the bedrock of the economy of St. Lucia. So he actually trained us and, and, and advised us to move in that direction. So you will find, if you look at the records of St. Mary's College, which incidentally I wrote a, a, a treatise on, yes. and, and you will find in there um, how he infused the whole issue of agricultural development into us. The result was that scores of us eventually went into agriculture, for example, um, the first one was a, a, a gentleman by the name of Louis Campbell, Francis Leon's Dr. Edmonds, and so right. on, uh, who came in before me. Right. All these guys eventually became very key people in the development of St. Lucia. Wow. The it whole did. development of St. Lucia. You can say that the development of St. Lucia at the critical time of the agricultural expansion in terms of bananas was in fact due to a significant extent um, um, Brother Canis' influence on, uh, on us. Students, yeah. uh, so, so I was a very good science student, you see, as, as, as a result. For example, um, I belong to a group that did the first uh, higher school certificate in three science subjects, chemistry, botany, zoology, you know. And, of course, um, I was the first St. Lucian to get distinctions Wow. in botany and chemistry. Wow, yeah. great, 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 yeah. great. Okay, from, from there... But in, no, but in addition to that, uh, I must say that the, my orientation was also agricultural in nature 
because my mother came from a rural area ah, okay. in a place called Founier, opposite Marquis Estate. Okay. Okay. Uh, my father was a town man, mm -hmm. right? He was an accountant and so on. But my mother came from a, a farming community at Founier. And her father, that's my grandfather, had a, a very big farm mm -hmm. uh, uh, in, 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 in that place. He had a farm of about 120 acres. Okay. And, and, and when I was a young boy, I used to go up every holiday. My mother used to take us up to the country. So I became familiar with all the agricultural things because he had a, a self-contained and self-sufficient farm. Uh, both livestock, bees, mm -hmm. and crops. Well diversified. Very, very diversified. Um, so I was introduced, for example, like um, production of cassava, mm -hmm. which is a big thing now. That's a big thing now. But we had our platine and all that kind of stuff. And, and I always remember uh, the, 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 the question of doing cassava mm -hmm. was very, very intensive mm -hmm. because you had to get up very early go to, you know, get the roots and bring them down to the processing area because it had to be done the same day. Right, yes. Because of, you know, the hydrogen cyanide and so on and, correct, and so on. Correct, correct, correct. So it was very, very intensive, you know. So the, the, agricultural, um, the agricultural activities that I was exposed to at a very early age mm -hmm. cemented the thing when I went to college. So I went to do agriculture. And then from there you went to UWE? Yeah, from, from there I went to UWE. When they acquired... Uh, I, 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 I was the first group of um, West Indian students to do the degree in agriculture at the Imperial College of uh, Tropical Agriculture, yes, okay. which is in, um, in Trinidad. Right. Now, the Imperial College of Tropical Agriculture was the foremost agricultural institute in the world to do tropical agriculture. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was... But that was controlled by the British government, um, who trained all her agricultural uh, officers throughout the tropical world, from Fiji, you know, to Mauritius, to India, you know, um, the whole of Africa, you know. So they used to be trained in that that place. So in 1960, it changed to. The, the, the University of the West Indies, University College of the West Indies. Mm -hmm. um, so I've always got it to change from the Imperial College of Tropical Agriculture to the Faculty of Agriculture ah. uh, in 1960. So I was in the first group okay. that um, did the agricultural degree. Okay. Yeah. Leaving university, you came back to St. Lucia. And from there, what happened from there? When I left university, I... Um, I was an uh, agronomist for the, what is called the, um, uh, the Regional Research Center. There was a research center for agriculture in Trinidad at the uh, same Imperial College of uh, Agriculture. Okay. And they, had done, um, they have done um, research in many tropical crops like cocoa, you know, and bananas. So I came to St. Lucia to do some experiments on bananas because we are just, bananas are just coming in, right? And, and they had to determine the fertilizer requirements of the banana. Yeah, right. So I did some experiments throughout St. Lucia um, in the different agroecological zones, bananas have grown for uh, determining the, 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 the requirements for nitrogen, um, phosphorus, and potassium so that you could get a formulation right. to give to the farmers. Mm -hmm. So the first set of fertilizer um, formulations were determined, right, by us. There was a gentleman by the name of um, Ian Twyford, an Englishman, yes, I remember who trained me um, um, in, in experimentation and so on and so forth. So I became very adept in terms of field experimentation, mm -hmm. right? And of course, that stayed with me yes. when I became research officer of the Correct. Ministry of Agriculture. Definitely. 
So after that, well, you would know about that because yes. I think I trained you guys you also. definitely trained me. <laughs> in in, in um, field experimentation oh, as, yes. as oh, well. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. So when, I, when we did that, when I did that, then I left and went to England to specialize in soil science. Ah. So basically, really, I'm, 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 a, I'm a soil scientist by training, yes. by further training. Yes. Yeah. And then, and then I came back to St. Lucia and then uh, became the research officer in the, in the Ministry of Agriculture uh, uh, with responsibility for Union Agricultural Station. Station. But in addition to Union Agricultural Station, I did experiments all over St. Lucia. Yes, sir. All over. Mm -hmm. I know that every, you know, hole, so to speak, yes, yes, in yeah. St. Lucia. Uh, because the first thing that, uh, that, that, that um, you have to know is that the response of crops varies according to, soil you know, type soil, soil type, rainfall, ecological zone. The ecological zone. Mm -hmm. So whatever experiments that I did, I didn't do it in one ecological zone. I had to do it in several ecological zones to see the responses that you would get mm -hmm. for that particular zone. Yes, yes, I remember. I can't, in fact, when I came in as a cadet, I remember we had experimental plots in Lafayette, they'll say, and we did peanuts. Yeah. And I remember planting peanuts and all my hands were bruised, you know. We had a lot of um, experiments all over the place. Yeah. Um, um, for example, we did a lot of experiments on Irish potatoes. Irish potatoes, correct, yes. I see they're doing some there now. <laughs> I know. But we, we did all that well, experiments already, and, exactly. and we, 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 we knew the, 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 the variety. We had taken varieties from Canada and from, also from the UK. Mm -hmm. And in fact, Mr. Leon had done it before me. And I continued, and then we did the Irish potatoes in different zones. For example, uh, at Bath, Correct. right in the Sufra area. Mm -hmm. um, um, uh, of course, in the, in the low low lying areas like Union and so on, mm -hmm. um, and at Viewfort, you know these kind of areas. Mm -hmm. So you know you found out where the best place was. In yes. fact, Sufra area was in fact the best place to grow, yes, yes. To grow, grow potatoes. Because Irish of the, so potatoes. the soil type. And the, no, the climate too. The climate too has yeah, a lot to yeah, do with yeah, it. Yes, yeah, cool. yeah, definitely. But I remember, um, one of the things I remember you, you did, um, there were varietal trials. Oh, yes. There, 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 there were spacing trials. There were fertilizer trials. Right, I remember right. you know, having what they call a guard row. All of <laughs> <laughs> you yes, know? well, I, in fact, I'm not sure whether the present day guys um, in the Ministry of Agriculture, um, I, 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 I feel disappointed. Yes. And um, in fact, even at my age, I'm willing to, to train them because there, there are certain principles that you have to follow if you have to make recommendations for farmers. Exactly. And the experiments have to be properly designed and executed. And the results have to be analyzed statistically. Correct. Right. All right? right. Yes. And I, I, I think I taught you all um, some statistics yes, as well. We did. Yes. How to interpret the results that you get mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, so on, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that is why I talk about the guard rows that you talk about. Yes. In doing the pollots, you cannot... Uh, first, the soil type is important. Yes, yes. Now, in St. Lucia, we have about 53 or 54 soil types. And the soil types vary very, very, in very short, short distances, distances yes, and so on. Yes, yes. So when you, let, when you set your experiment down on a particular soil type, you must be, uh, the, 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 the treatments that you give must be in what's called random plots, randomized yes, plots. Yes, um, so in doing the randomized plots, you have to make sure that there's no interference from one plot to the next. The next. So you have to surround it. Yes. All right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, by the, whatever plants that you're growing, mm -hmm. so that there's absolutely no in, um, uh, interference. So that's why you call it guard, guard plots. Yes, yes, I remember that. Anyway, we do have a break. You're watching On the Field with me. Back soon. The Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Food Security, and Rural Development continues placing heavy emphasis on the concept of food security. 
It's our prosperity, our future. The Crop Production Unit conducts surveillance and monitoring for transboundary pests and diseases of quarantine importance for St. Lucia. It provides technical assistance in the areas of post-harvest technology, agro-processing, and soil and plant tissue diagnosis. The unit facilitates prudent management of agrochemicals and toxic chemicals in an environmentally friendly manner for sustainable development. Soil analysis is also being carried out. Need further assistance on crop production? Contact the Senior Research Officer at 468-5601. Welcome back to the program on the field with me, Philip Sidney, and of course my guest, Sir Calix George, who of course you heard had many, many portfolios in his lifetime. That's why he was knighted Sir Calix George. So George, we mentioned about the experimental plot and the, uh, doing experiments around the island, all little holes uh, based on the, the soil types and the ecological zones that you spoke, to, spoke about. But I also remember you preparing a number of tech packs. Oh, well. Uh, and let me tell you, I, this, this, and you, you said you were sad. I am saddened because I'm trying to revive those tech, tech packs, you know, so that at least we, we have something to work with moving into where we are today. I, I, had, I have a copy of my CV, and in it has... The, 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 the same tech packs you're talking about. Mm -hmm. How to grow onions. Yes. Cabbages. Yeah. Sweet pepper. Mm -hmm. Cabbage. I remember. You know, this kind of thing. Eggplant. Tomatoes. So the, the, res, the, the results of the experiments that I did, that we just talked about, the field experiments in mm -hmm. different places, gave us the information that was necessary to do the tech packs. Right. So it's on the basis of the experiments that we did that we can tell you that Calypso is a good variety to, mm -hmm. to do. In this particular right, location. And how, to, right. and how to go about planting yes, it. Yes, right. Well, I have all that information. I know, I, I can remember that very As well. a matter of fact, they were talking about um, food security and all that kind of stuff. And um, I was looking for one that I did on home home vegetable gardening mm -hmm. that gave you all the information that you required for you to do a vegetable garden all right and i also gave that that's for home vegetable gardens right and i also gave the details of the um of the growing for example of onions if you're growing onions or tomatoes and mm -hmm. so on and so forth mm -hmm. now i i gave it to a lot of People, there were a lot of people that got it at those days, but there's only one person I think that will be able to, to help you to get it. And I, 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 I spoke to his son, and the son promised to give me, to look for it for me, and that is um, Mongru. Ah, Gregory Mongru. Gregory Mongru. Okay. Gregory, Gregory Mongru. Um, I must say, is one of the farmers. Oh, yes that actually used all my information on all my experiments and so on. And if you go to Gregory Mongru, he will tell you exactly some of the things in terms of the growing of the vegetables, which he got from me. Definitely. And, I, and he, had a copy of, he had a copy of the book. All right. You see? Apart from the tech packs, which I'm sure people like Gregory Mongru and other farmers, you know, did... Uh, use in the uh, establishment of the plots and of course I'm sure they saw increasing production of course and you know money's in the pockets. The oh yeah, there, there were quite a few of them you know um, uh, there were Miko in the Miko area there were quite a few um, guys for example Flood. Yes I remember the Flood, Flood went, went into it yes. and was growing I remember Cabbage. Cabbage yes. he had a real great um, mm -hmm. thing around the I remember that. The, the, the Vigé River. Mm -hmm. He used irrigation and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. um, there, were, there were some guys from Miku as well. Um, uh, Mr. Reynolds, I think his name. Um, 
uh, and there were, um, oh, Elite. Yes, from Babono. Babono. Yes, he too was, was a very, to very good yes. vegetable farmer and so on and so forth. So you had some key guys that actually yes. utilized the information. You could grow onions and all that kind of stuff. We used to grow onions on a regular oh, yes, basis, you know. Yeah, yeah. Okay, takes me to my favorite part of the program, agricultural cadet course. <laughs> oh, oh. How, how, how did that come about, sir? No, the agricultural school at Union, it's a, a school, it's an agricultural college that was established in 1910 or something like that, you know. 1910? Yes, 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 yes. Oh, One wow. of the first things, you see, St. Lucia has always been an agricultural country, mm -hmm. all right? And when the, when the British took over, um, they, obviously had to, they obviously had to develop the country. Mm -hmm. So you find out that um, they had to establish areas for the propagation of tropical crops. You understand? So, and in addition to that, you had to have people trained in agriculture. If it's, it's an agricultural, yes. uh, it's an agricultural um, uh, economy, so you have to have people trained in it. So, the, in addition to establishing the 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 the, the um, propagation centers and so on, agricultural centers, there's a commission which the British government set up, right, in 1897, and in it the recommendation for agricultural development of the colonies came in. And that is how they formed the first um, agricultural stations. You see, so, so the station now was located, well, guess where? In the gardens? In the gardens. That's right, yes. And, right. And, 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 and the office of the superintendent of agriculture is still there in the gardens. Yes, it is. You see the building? Yeah, they use for the... Um, the was it Red Cross at the time? I, 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 I don't know what, what, yeah. what they're using it yeah, there for now, the but that, that wooden building there mm -hmm. in the gardens was where the agricult first agricultural station was. And in there, they also taught the agricultural school was, was established. Okay. You see? So it came from there and went up to, um, it went up to, to Union when they bought over, the, 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 they left, the station left Castries and went up to Union, okay? So that's how Union Agricultural Station came in. So Union Agricultural Station, right, is really a replacement for the botanical gardens. That's why it is called botanical garden, because it had to do with the botany of, of, of crops. It, of course, it's no longer... Yeah, you can't call it a botanical no, garden. No, gone. I don't know what you can call it now. <laughs> Brigrant but, City. <laughs> now, incidentally, uh, as an aside, um, you hear about Sir Arthur Lewis, yeah. the great Sir Arthur Lewis. Yeah. Sir Arthur Lewis's first job was right there in that building. Wow. When he left school, uh, he left school, I think he must have been very, very young, you know, he got the, he, you know, he was too young, actually, to get the, to, to, he didn't qualify in age for the scholarship, but he had passed his examinations and so on. Yeah. So he worked in the gardens as what they call a copyist in the Ministry of Agriculture. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, li and listen to me. And I have written about it in my book on St. Mary's College, where Sir Arthur is well known for his, his paper on the limited supplies of, of labor and the whole issue of development economics. economics. My thesis is this, that Sir Arthur got to know that from the time he worked at the Ministry of Agriculture in St. Lucia, because in there he had to be exposed to the big farmers, the big plantation owners, as well as the peasantry that was just growing. Okay? So you find now that his thesis deals with that dichotomy. 
of the uh, of the the economy, the what what what, what we call the traditional economy, as opposed to the non-traditional one. Okay, so you uh, uh, that is explained in 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 his in his uh, paper on limited supplies of labor. And I am saying this as a result of his interaction in the Ministry of Agriculture that he did that paper to show the dichotomy of the two, two, the two economies, if you want to call it that. That gave him the Nobel Prize. Okay. That's my, that's my thesis. Interesting, interesting, interesting. In addition to that, People don't know that. I have his volumes there, you know, if, if you want to. I can give you the volumes. If you go, if you go to my, 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 my desk there, you will see the, all the volumes of Sir Arthur, the three volumes of his books, of his papers. All right? And in it, you will see that there is a significant amount of work that he did on agricultural economics, right, which is very well documented. So much so, again, I, I, I write it in my book, that his contribution, they say he never did anything for St. Lucia. Yes, that. But he did so much for St. Lucia that St. Lucians don't even know about it. The fact that he did all those works in agricultural economics, all right, he had written about the economics, the economics of agriculture in the developing world. And he identified Jamaica at the time as the ideal developmental laboratory, so to speak. Okay? And one of the things in Jamaica was that Jamaica had a Jamaica School of Agriculture, right, which was right. similar to the one of the union one that I'm talking about, but on a much bigger scale. And it was also located at Hope Gardens, which was the same equivalent of the botanical gardens there. Okay. So they trained those Jamaican people, and eventually they became the Jamaica School of Agriculture, JSA. So you must have heard of your, heard your of contemporaries. The they went there, yes. Some of our 40 and some of those guys yes. went to JSA. So the JSA graduates were supposed to be the best in the, in the, in the, um, in the tropical world. So when St. Lucia's development in agriculture was expanding, Sir Arthur Lewis recommended that those agricultural officers who were trained in Jamaica, right, should be distributed and came to St. Lucia. So that is how you have the first wave of, of Jamaican agriculturists into St. Lucia, like Harry Atkinson, Stuart, Gage, all right. Mullins. Mullins and those guys. Yes, okay. That's and right. they're the ones who actually, as you know, were the main extension officers mm -hmm. for the development of agriculture in St. Lucia. Correct. And that is a contribution stemming from Sir Arthur Lewis. Wow. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. Hold that thought. We uh, do for our, the end of our program. Um, I must say thank you for the first part. We are coming to our second part in a while. You have been watching On the Field with me. We are going to be um, expanding the program to our second phase, so stay tuned.